Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to The Tonight Show. You're here. The Tonight Show. And happy Halloween, everybody. Uh, you, uh, you can tell I'm in the Halloween spirit. I've been wearing my Jimmy Kimmel costume for almost two months now. <laughs> Oh, this is fun. Earlier tonight, President Biden and the First Lady welcomed trick-or-treaters to the White House for the first fully in-person Halloween celebration since the pandemic. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yep, Halloween was back at the White House, and it was a nice chance to uh, reuse Melania's Christmas decorations. <laughs> Trick-or-treaters were psyched. Every kid went home with a bag of candy. It was different than the last administration when every kid went home with a bag of classified documents. Right? <laughs> only take one, only take one classified document. <laughs> Meet you at Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> I read that some of the most popular Halloween candies this year are Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, Kit Kats, and Snickers. Uh, but there, there are some candies out there that people don't like as much. Uh, Tariq, do you think you can give us some tips on which candies to avoid? Do I? <laughs> Hit it. <laughs> Candy corn, you could take a back seat. Your tacky, waxy, batters, rancid crab meat. Neck away for your inedible rock. Just a small ass Marty that tastes like chalk. Don't even get me started on good and plenties. You taste like pennies, more like bad and too many. And milk does. Get away from me. Won't get you out of my teeth until Christmas Eve. And juju bees, you get an ooh from me. I'd rather chew blue cheese mixed with prune juice, please. And dots, how about not? You can rock in the box. Give me Twix, Junior Mints, anything but a dot. Give me Reese's, Snickers, Crunch or Runts. But give me Laffy Taffy and I'll punch your guts. I'll take anything out of desperation if the only other option is a box of race. Oh, come on now. Come on, come on now. That's amazing. The greatest. Oh my God. Three Trotter, right now. See it. Come on. Uh, hey guys, uh, I saw that this weekend former President Obama was campaigning in Michigan, and when he started talking about getting older, some women in the crowd chimed in. Take a look at this. I have to admit that sometimes going out on the campaign trail feels a little harder than it's used to. Not just because I'm older and grayer. I don't know if y'all heard that. Said I was still fine. <laughs> fine. Then Michelle was like, yeah, I think we're done with the campaign speech. Is there anything? He's like, I'm Barack Obama. I approve this message. That's the one difference between Obama and Biden. When Obama's on stage, people are like, he is fine. And when Biden's on stage, people are like, he's fine. <laughs> fine. That's right, the Democrats have deployed Obama on the campaign trail. Tell me you're nervous about the midterms without telling me you're nervous about the midterms. <laughs> Some business news in Elon Musk's first round of layoffs at Twitter. He reportedly plans to fire 25% of the company's workforce. Meanwhile, Facebook said, we're hiring. Everyone was like, no thanks. <laughs> but Twitter is actually uh, trying to hire replacements, and we found some questions on the application that Elon Musk is sending out. And here are some of the questions. They're very interesting here. Let's check some of these out. The first one says, on a scale from flop to banger, how mid are you? <laughs> Next up, there's, are you comfortable working someplace where the punishment for eating someone's food in the office fridge is being blasted into space? <laughs> After that, it asks, would you prefer to be paid in Dogecoin or Fortnite V-Bucks? <laughs> uh, V-Bucks, please. Yeah. Then it says, uh, please attach your resume and the dankest SpongeBob meme you can find. These are odd questions. Yeah. And finally, it asks, can I borrow $44 billion? Wow. Good luck. But did you see this, though? Elon Musk tweeted something that was considered misinformation and then deleted it later because it was a false conspiracy theory, which is awkward when you're the owner of Twitter. <laughs> uh, here was the email that Musk received. It said, dear me, I regret to inform me that my tweet violated my terms of service, so I will have to ask me to delete my tweet as soon as me can. 
If I do not delete my tweet, I will be forced to do it for me. If I, you, me, have any questions, you, me, should contact me at our, us's earliest convenience. Yours truly, you. That's a lot to, to figure out. Meanwhile, I saw that to reduce the amount of misinformation on their platform, YouTube will now let doctors and nurses apply for their videos to be marked as reliable. Oh. Yeah, YouTube uh, finally looked at all their misinformation on their site and said, Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> So now people who post fake information online are freaking out, like... <laughs> because if they keep spreading lies, YouTube might step in and stop them, kind of like... The question is, how do democracies respond to this thing? And what will it mean for, uh... But people need to know which sources to trust, or they could fall for anything, like... Oh, no. oh, 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 oh. Or they might jump to wrong conclusions, kind of like... So, <laughs> if you're spreading misinformation, it's got to come down kind of like... Hey, Ron. Hey, Billy. <laughs> and please always make sure your sources are reliable or nothing you say will make sense. Kind of like... What do you think? I like turtles. There you go. I, I hope that helped. I hope that helped, everybody. Hi, Billy. Hey, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ron. hey, Billy. <laughs> Some more business news. Uh, Spirit Airlines just revealed upgraded larger seats that they're adding to their new planes. Ooh. They're all on the wing, but still, it's exciting. <laughs> something. That's right, larger seats, but to maximize profits, they'll make you spoon with another passenger. <laughs> Well, get this, I heard that nearly 150,000 pounds of chicken patties sold at Costco have been recalled because there might be plastic in it. 150,000 pounds of chicken. Thankfully, at Costco, that's just one package. <laughs> uh, finally, <laughs> some thieves in Georgia were arrested after police found them by following a trail of candy wrappers in the woods. <laughs> the judge must have had fun with the story because their bail was 100 grand. I just want to say to all the parents at home eating your children's Halloween candy, you know what you're doing is wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can tell today is November 1st because all the spirit Halloweens have gone back to being abandoned Sears outlets. <laughs> Let's get to some news, uh, guys. The midterm elections are just one week away. That's right, in one week we'll know who gets the House, the Senate, and the upper hand at Thanksgiving. You can tell the midterms are close when the fundraising emails are in all caps. Jimmy, I need $10 now! <laughs> and get this, as if the midterms weren't already crazy enough, apparently the country is facing a paper ballot shortage. Right now, the My Pillow guy's yelling at a tree for rigging the election. <laughs> a paper ballot shortage. Now on election day, you have to close the curtain and just yell for who you're voting for. Like, <laughs> Republican, Republican, Democrat, Republican! Well, President Biden is working hard to give Democrats a final push before the election. Starting today, he's appearing at campaign rallies in Florida, New Mexico, California, Pennsylvania, and Maryland. Yeah. If a jet-lagged 79-year-old can't rally the Democrats, nothing can. <laughs> yeah, today Biden was in Florida, which is tough, a tough place for Democrats. I mean, right, right now, one Democrat in Florida is losing to an alligator with a mullet. <laughs> Well, this is wild. I read that Republicans are expecting former President Trump to be indicted soon after Election Day. Yeah, it feels like the political version of waiting to break up with someone until after the holidays. It's like... I just... <laughs> yep, Trump could be indicted for the holidays, which sounds kind of like a Christmas movie on MSNBC. <laughs> uh, speaking of the former president, uh, Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts just temporarily blocked Congress from obtaining years of Trump's federal income tax returns. Yep, Trump was so excited, he started chugging ketchup like he'd won the Indy 500. He's like... <laughs> Switching gears, uh, now that Elon Musk has taken over Twitter, he apparently also wants to bring back Vine to compete with TikTok. <laughs> I like it. I think it'd be a great idea. I also think it'd be great if they had a feature where you could fast-forward videos to get to the best part. You know what I'm saying? For example, you, you could skip this part. 
Yeah, and go... <laughs> go right to this part. I didn't know the first part was that fast. Yeah. <laughs> it snuck up on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was actually you could you could actually watch the whole video. <laughs> uh, that makes no sense. <laughs> uh, let me give you an example here. You, you skip this part. Yeah, and go right to this part. <laughs> That's what I want to see. I... Let's just give one more example. You could skip this part. Yeah, and go right to this part. <laughs> Flipper. Wow. Uh, guys, get this. The makers of Ring Doorbell are about to release their first car alarm. I'm not sure how helpful it is. All it does is let you watch someone steal your car. There you go. <laughs> Hey, I saw the TV ratings for this year's World Series between the Astros and the Phillies are the best in years. So naturally, a lot of the brands want to get their message out to such a big audience, but I was surprised at some of this year's World Series sponsors. W watch this, I saw. The MLB World Series is brought to you by Twitter. Sign up today to understand next year's Netflix documentary about our collapse. The Trump Organization, clogging your news feed since 2016. And by Adidas. So we're cool now, right? And finally, in China, the winner of a $30 million lottery jackpot is not telling his family about it because he doesn't want them to get lazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be weird on family vacations when the kids are like, why is dad in first class without us? <laughs> it seems like there's so much going on right now. Everyone's gearing up for the midterms. The World Series is heating up. Uh, the top 10 songs in the country are all by Taylor Swift. <laughs> Also, also, Stouffer's is releasing its own Bloody Mary mix that tastes like lasagna. <laughs> there, there's a lot to go over. Let's just jump in, cover it all at once. It's time for News Smash. <laughs> First up, the midterms. They're, they're less than a week away. Republicans are trying to win back control of the House and Senate, while the Democrats want to hold on to both. Two sides going head-to-head, -head, kind of like the World Series. Tonight was game four between the Phillies and the Astros. Both teams are doing everything they can to prove that they're the best in the country. Speaking of the best in the country, Taylor Swift. She's <laughs> the first artist to hold all top 10 spots in the Billboard 100 at once. That must feel good. And if you want to feel good too, maybe don't try Stouffer's new lasagna flavored <laughs> Bloody Mary mix. It's vodka mixed with lasagna topped with a rim of shredded mozzarella. It's the perfect drink for anyone who wants to black out and forget all about the midterms. It's a stressful time. President Biden has been touring the country, trying to rally support for Democrats, but the only tour most people care about is Taylor. She announced her era's tour this week. Tickets aren't available yet, but Swifties are losing their minds, foaming at the mouth, which are also side effects when you drink Stouffer's lasagna-flavored Bloody Mary mix. Look at this thing. It's, it's like a lasagna smoothie. It's like a V8 from hell. Uh, if you drink one of these, you, you might get the runs. You need runs if you want to win. Uh, Philly's going to go nuts if they win, by the way. Police are already racing to grease up light poles. Uh, speaking of races and poles, the midterms. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Oz is running for office in Pennsylvania, and you'll be in a doctor's office after drinking alcoholic lasagna. In conclusion, here we go. Time to vote. What a show. Just no. This has been a new show. Well, speaking of the midterms and the World Series, yesterday during a speech, President Biden said that Philly's fans are the most obnoxious fans in the world. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Joe was like, uh, Joe, is there something you want to tell me? Or is this... <laughs> And this was big tonight. Biden delivered a primetime speech from Capitol Hill about the midterm elections and said it could take several days for all of the votes to be counted in some swing states. And unfortunately, after these past two years, every state is a swing state. So. <laughs> yeah, a lot of experts are predicting a red wave on Election Day. And you can tell Biden's nervous because he already hired Rudy Giuliani to challenge the results. 
Well, everyone's talking about the midterms, and a lot of races are coming down to the wire. Uh, let me explain it all to you with the midterms in pictures. Here we go. <laughs> the midterm elections are next Tuesday. We're going to find out if Congress is going red, blue, or a different color altogether. <laughs> After months of campaigning, voters are tired and cranky. <laughs> Watching commercial after commercial has driven them completely insane. At this point, they'd be fine if every candidate just disappeared. But the election is important for our democracy, for our future, and for millions of kids. Uh, now, of course, not everyone can win. The losers will have to take it on the chin and get sent away on an involuntary vacation. Meanwhile, the winners will feel great until their poll numbers start to slide down. The important thing is that everyone votes, no matter what state you live in, because voting is the best thing about America since it was born in 1776. That was a good Well, listen to this. According to prosecutors, after storming the Capitol on January 6th, a group of rioters spent over $400 at the Olive Garden. That explains why they changed their slogan to Olive Garden when you hear your family, especially that one weird uncle in the Olive Garden. <laughs> Switching gears, uh, did you guys see this? Adele just revealed that her name is actually pronounced Adele. <laughs> Adele's name is pronounced Adele. <laughs> or as her fans put it, uh, no. With Adele. That's right. Adele's name is pronounced Adele. I, I had no idea. Do you guys know that? Psst. Of course I knew that. I never mispronounce any celebrity names. Come on. Give me any celebrity name. Okay, I guess. I can test you real quick. I mean, uh, who's this? Oh, that's easy. Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> okay, who's this? Disney Channel. Come on. <laughs> Give me some harder ones, man. Rapid fire me. Come on. Okay, I'm not sure this is a great idea, but uh, here we go. Uh, Who's this? Okay. Uh, hug my aunt. <laughs> Buns of steel. Gluten-free mozzarella. <laughs> macaroni and cheese. Uh -huh. uh, Moderna Pfizer. <laughs> Jake Jello Pudding Pops and his sister, Maggie Goo Goo Dolls. Wait, why, why would their names be pronounced differently? Well, it's like Roosevelt and Roosevelt, you know? Come on. All right. Keep them coming. All right. Well, uh, what about her? Okay. Hilarious Banks. <laughs> Penis Quaalude. Oh. Anus and Arms. Colin Fart. All right, that, I think that's enough. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. No, it's good. Steve Higgins, everybody. That's more than thank you. Adele. Well, uh, here's some fun news. This year's Rockefeller Center Christmas tree has been selected. Yep. The tree is moving from the suburbs to the big city. Right now, its parents are telling it to always carry its wallet in its front pocket. <laughs> That's right, the tree is a Norway spruce that's 50 feet wide and 82 feet tall. Although it put 85 feet tall on its timber profile. There you go. <laughs> and finally, it's time for our... Yeah, uh, timber, yeah. It's, it's finally... It's time for our latest installment of tonight's show, Polls. Here we go, everybody. And this first poll... Asked, what did you have for lunch today? 1% said a sandwich. 1% said a salad. 98% said 12 fun size Snickers left over from Halloween. <laughs> this next poll asked, uh, why did you take out a loan? 42% said to buy a car. 44% said to pay off my mortgage. 14% said to stay verified on Twitter. Oh, <laughs> that's wow. the new... Wow. This next one asks, have you seen The Watcher on Netflix? 70% said yes. 29% said no. 1% said, I've watched my neighbors watch it. <laughs> mm. This next poll asks, would you vote for Herschel Walker? 10% said no. 90% said, of course, he's my father. <laughs> Come on! Next poll asks, uh, how do you eat a banana? 10% said, peel it and eat it. 10% said, peel it and break it off pieces with my hand. 80% said, sideways like a corn cob. <laughs> what? 80%? Yeah, 80 80% of 80 said they wow, do that. That's how they eat it sideways. <laughs> <laughs> this next poll asks, so what do you think will be the winning Powerball lottery numbers? 33% said, 8675309. <laughs> 
Thirty-three said nine zero two one zero. Thirty-four percent said one eight seven seven cars for kids. This next poll asks, what do you do at the gym? 10% said Pilates. 25% said jog on the treadmill. 25% said lift weights. 40% said sit completely still on an exercise bike while watching Property Brothers on my phone. <laughs> this last one asks, are you excited for Christmas? 80% said, yeah. 19% said, I guess so. Mariah Carey said, bish, what do you think? <laughs> Let's get to some news, guys. I read that Jeff Bezos may partner with Jay-Z to buy the NFL's Washington Commanders. <laughs> Bezos might be the only person who has to stop and be like, wait, do I already own a football team? <laughs> I'm rooting for Bezos and Jay-Z. I never thought I'd say this, but after the last few weeks, I just want some normal billionaires. <laughs> Don't you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can't they just be normal? One of the big stories today that I was reading in the headlines that was funny, Starbucks just rolled out their holiday menu and their 25th anniversary holiday cups. Yeah. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's everywhere, yeah. We're so starved for good news, we're now celebrating the anniversary of a cup. <laughs> we're like, 25 years of a cup! Oh, my gosh! Tariq, you see this cup? Let me text you this cup. News. <laughs> That's right. Starbucks just rolled out their holiday menu and cups. They even released a special message. Uh, check this out. The holidays are here, and Starbucks is excited to bring back all your holiday favorites, like holiday cups, peppermint mochas, Michael Buble CDs, holiday cups, peppermint mochas, Michael Buble CDs, holiday cups, peppermint mochas, Michael Buble CDs. Oh, my God. It's only November. What are we doing? No, don't question it. Remember, must use Christmas to sell coffee. So happy holidays from Starbucks. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> well, get this today. Netflix launched their new ad-supported plan for only $7 a month. But this is interesting, though. Apparently, some Netflix shows have exclusive sponsors. Do you hear about that? I'll show you what I mean. First up, Grace and Frankie is uh, exclusively sponsored by Activia. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's exclusive to the show. Yeah. Squid Game is sponsored by Black Friday at Best Buy. You know? <laughs> I'm starting to understand yeah, it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, next up, the, the Watcher is sponsored by this photo of Senator Mark Kelly. Here you go. Oh, wow. <laughs> OK, buddy, OK. Next up, Stranger Things is sponsored by October Kanye. There you go. <laughs> Stranger Things. Wow. Next up, Dahmer is sponsored by Impossible Meat. There you go. Oh, that's... <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> and finally, Bridgerton is sponsored by Brookstone Back Massagers. Well, that is it. Be back. Uh, switching gears last night at a train station in Washington, D.C., President Biden delivered a speech about protecting democracy. And uh, normally, when a guy on a train platform is yelling about the country being doomed, you just avoid eye contact and keep moving. <laughs> Some more political news. I heard that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is reconsidering a presidential run in 2024 because he doesn't want to fight former President Trump for the nomination. That's a bummer. We were so close to a showdown of Ronald versus Donald. That was... <laughs> Speaking of elections, the midterms are this Tuesday, and there are several key races around the country. And while these races can get heated, it's important to remember what the candidates actually agree on. Here, let me show you what I mean. First up, John Fetterman and Dr. Oz are facing off in Pennsylvania, but they both can agree at that they should play Uncle Fester and Gomez in the Adams Family <laughs> reboot. Certain things you got to be able to agree on. Yeah. Next up, uh, Blake Masters is facing off against uh, Mark Kelly in Arizona. They can both agree that they shouldn't tell anyone they're secretly in the Blue Man Group. <laughs> up next in Nevada, Susie Lee is facing off against April Becker. They can both agree that they'd like to speak to a manager. <laughs> I'd, just like to speak, I'd just like to speak to a manager. Here's another one. Angie Craig is facing off against Tyler Kissner in Minnesota, but they can both agree that they should join forces to host an HGTV show about <laughs> fixer-uppers. Angie, there's no way you're gonna get this done in three days. <laughs> up next. 
Uh, Rudy Salas is facing uh, David Valadeo. They're facing off in California. They can both agree that they're literally the same person except one wears glasses. <laughs> Next up in Pennsylvania, Matt Cartwright is facing off against Jim Bognet. They can both agree, one who smelt it and one who dealt it. That is... <laughs> That's odd. And finally, uh, Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker are facing off in Georgia. They can both agree, no one knows what the hell is even going on anymore. <laughs> this is uh, it's all bizarre. Well, some entertainment news. Yesterday, the new trailer for Avatar 2, The Way of Water, was released. And as you guys probably heard, they shot the third movie as well at the same time. So today, they released the trailer for Avatar 3. Yeah, take a look at this thing. The Way of Water connects all things. The unforgettable characters of Pandora return, like Jake and Neytiri, along with majestic new underwater heroes, such as Bosco, Waffles, Patches, and introducing Noodles, Avatar 3, Wet Dogs. We spent all our money on Avatar 2, so we just took pictures of some dogs in a pool. That looks good. You guys see this? Uh, Elon Musk announced that uh, he's working with Twitter engineers on a reboot of Vine. Yeah, I could be ready by the end of the year. When Viners heard Vine might make a comeback, they were like, Yeah, I sure hope it does. <laughs> Meanwhile, kids who only grew up with TikTok are hearing about vines and thinking, What are those? <laughs> I mean, most people, most people haven't thought about vine in a while, so they were really surprised by the news, kind of like, Some people think Elon Musk is making too many changes over at Twitter and getting carried away, kind of like... <laughs> but most people are excited for Vine to return, so here's hoping Elon doesn't mess everything up, kind of like... <laughs> nice, Ron. I sneeze, Cole. I have a lot of sneeze. Nice, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen to this. Next month, the model for E.T. used in the movie is expected to sell at auction for $3 million. Whoa. That's kind of cool, but I don't know who's going to buy that, though. You know? I'm going to buy him! <laughs> Excuse me, sir? I, I, I said, I'm going to buy me an E.T. I, I've been waiting my whole life for this moment. I can use that dang E.T. for all sorts of things. <laughs> Like, like what? Well, I figure I can rest my coffee mug on his head. I can put a wig on him, take a picture, and make it my profile picture on my MySpace. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think people use MySpace anymore. Yeah, I got all sorts of plans for uses for an ET. I can put him next to the dishes and make it look like he's washing the dishes. <laughs> oh, I can take him to a baseball game, tell the stadium it's his birthday, then get him on the Jumbotron, have him say, Happy Birthday ET on it. And then while everyone is distracted wishing ET a happy birthday, I can steal a bunch of hot dogs from the concession stand. Then I got my dinner for a whole year. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan, but where, where, are you get, where are you gonna get $3 million to pay for? Well, don't worry about it. Just check me out on OnlyFans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, finally, <laughs> I saw that today is National Sandwich Day. Yeah! That's today. <laughs> National Sandwich Day. Hot dog, hot dog vendors were like, do we celebrate this or...? <laughs> it's gonna be a fun weekend here in New York City, because this Sunday is the New York City Marathon. <laughs> This weekend. Is anyone here running the marathon? Yeah. yeah? I'm sure that won't be the last time we hear you're running the marathon. <laughs> Good luck for you, by the way. A little trivia for you. I heard that the fastest marathon runners can hit a top speed of almost 13 miles an hour. Oh. Then everyone who drives a Kia Sportage was like, big deal, so can we. <laughs> That's right, people from all over the world are competing in this marathon, and it's very interesting. The city is adding some new obstacles along the route to uh, give runners the full New York experience. I, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. In, in Times Square, a group of Swedish tourists will stop the runners to ask where Times Square is. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, down in Staten Island, a guy named Skeezy Gus will challenge runners to a knife fight. Over in Washington Square Park, runners will be hounded by TikTokers with microphones asking, what song are you listening to? At this point, runners are handed tiny cups of lukewarm hot dog water. As they go up near Central Park, runners will have to dodge a full-blown pigeon brawl. <laughs> right over here, the uh, world's saddest-looking Elmo will try to sell runners a fake coach bag. Very cheap. Also, at this point, runners have to chase down a rat dragging a jumbo pretzel. <laughs> and finally, once they finish the race, runners will pay for a $200 Uber to LaGuardia. There you go. <laughs> The runners will. Good luck to everyone running the marathon. Uh, meanwhile, uh, early on Sunday morning, daylight savings time ends. So you'll gain an hour. Then. That's right. That's right. At 2 a.m., all the clocks turn back an hour while every bartender lets out an audible sigh. <laughs> Woo! Well, let's get to some news with uh, midterms just a few days away. Former President Trump is going on a final campaign blitz. At a rally last night in Iowa, Trump hinted that he's going to run again in 2024, but he did it in a pretty odd way. Watch this. I will very, very, very probably do it again, okay? Very, very, very probably. Very, 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 very probably. It's like my favorite book, The Very, Very, Very Probably Hungry Caterpillar. Very, very, very probably. It's also how Trump recited his wedding vows. I very, very, very probably do. <laughs> Some more news on the midterms. Oprah, who's launched uh, Dr. Oz's career, just endorsed his opponent, John Fetterman. <laughs> Apparently, this year, one of Oprah's favorite things is betrayal. <laughs> yep, Oprah endorsed Fetterman, which explains why Dr. Oz just tweeted this. Well, speaking of Oz and Fetterman, during last night's World Series game, I don't know if you saw this, I noticed that ads for the two candidates aired back to back, and the timing was pretty great. Check this out. Together, we'll stand up to extremism on both sides and bring balance to Washington. I'm Dr. Oz. I approve this message. Oz is a piece of in my opinion. Dr. Oz is like the proper medical term is piece of stool sample. Uh, I think. <laughs> well, a lot of people are talking about this. Jeff Bezos is thinking about buying the Washington Commanders. Did you see that? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, this guy might become an NFL owner. So uh, we decided to ask some NFL players if they want to play for Bezos. And here's what they said. First, Trevor Lawrence from the Jaguars said, eh, he doesn't look like my kind of guy. <laughs> then Brendan Schooler from the Patriots said, I don't think we'd have much in common. <laughs> Next, uh, Andrew Van Ginkle from the Dolphins said, yeah, for whatever reason, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> then Billy Price from the Cardinals said, uh, yeah, just from looking at him, I didn't know we'd hit it off. <laughs> Next, Lane Johnson from the Eagles said, working with Bezos would be smooth and we'd both shine. Where do I sign? <laughs> then Brian Hoyer from the Patriots said, I see myself in him. I, I'm not just talking about the reflection. And finally, Las Vegas Raiders owner Mark Davis said, Welcome to the NFL, Jeff. Here's your gift. <laughs> well, get this. Uh, the MTA just released a new subway bingo game to make riding the train a fun experience. <laughs> the MTA said, Well, it's the least we could do. And New Yorkers were like, Clearly. Yep, the bingo card has things like escalator, wooden bench, and businessman getting kicked in the face by a breakdancer. It's, it's fun. <laughs> well, hey, I saw this for the holidays. Miller Lite is releasing a pretty wild uh, contraption. Take a look at this. Beer brand Miller Lite is releasing a Christmas tree keg stand this holiday season. Its fully functioning tree stand is designed to fit around a quarter barrel keg. Its design makes it seem like beer is being poured from the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dreaming of a white trash Christmas. <laughs> if you thought the Christmas tree was lit before, yeah. 
kids will be like, I saw mommy dragging Santa Claus to the couch. Hey, hey.